my bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let us please stand. I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though this body be destroyed, yet shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not as a stranger. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For if we live, we live unto the Lord, and if we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so saith the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. Our opening hymn is number 207, verses 1 and 4. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose mercies cannot be numbered, accept our prayers on behalf of thy servant Bill, and grant him an entrance into the land of light and joy, and the fellowship of thy saints. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to fear, a time to tear and a time to sue, a time to keep silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I know that there is nothing better for them than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift that all, that all should eat and drink and take pleasure in all their toil. The word of the God. Thanks be to Thanks God. Be to God. Do I take this? That's great. The Lord is 
is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff will comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. If I speak in tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It does not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but it rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part that we prophesy only in part, but when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I responded like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love.
few notes that I have here in front of me that hopefully will keep me on track. <laughs> I want to say I believe it's a beautiful day. And I want to tell you how wonderful it is to see you all here to celebrate Billy's life. It's a privilege to be Billy's brother. It always has been. <clears throat> I want to tell you too that I feel the spirit of our creator here today, which hopefully will guide us through these times. And uh, I would just say that I, I believe we all have a common bond because of Billy. We have all shared his love, his friendship, his gift of giving. Like I say, I, I am glad to be a part of Billy's life. He continually reminded me of concentrating on our similarities and perhaps not our differences. He said, do not be quick to judge. Be understanding, be patient, and most of all, hold value in others. We also shared a bedroom with a dusty, old, broke down AM radio <laughs> where we listened to uh, 1010 Winds New York <laughs> and enjoyed rock and roll that was not old at the time. It was brand new. <laughs> right. By the way, I, I must mention years later, after some deliberation, and Billy was deliberate, we know that, we spoke of who was the rowdiest, who was the brother that got in the most trouble. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now. And I assured him it was me. I was the coolest, he said, no, <laughs> Bobby, think about this. And he had some terms of endearment too, by the way, but I don't know, keep that 
to myself. <laughs> he said, I did everything you did and more, but I never got caught. Oh. That gives you a pretty good idea of what was going on. Billy was a light. His candle high on the hillside had no basket over it. It was a beacon in the window providing shelter perhaps from a storm. He represented stability, sound advice, and most of all, to me, family and home. <laughs> Bill and Rosemary and their family always had a spot for us, for myself and my family. One more recent example of his good spirit was that our cousin Frankie most recently uh, became ill. Frank was born in 1947. He was weary and he was weak. He was alone until Bill and Rosemary took him under their wing and gave him lots of love and the, and the grandchildren, of course, and Billy's children. He, they came to comfort him with all the hospitalization, visits to his home, and when he needed assistance, they arranged for a home with medical care right here locally. In Frank's last days, Bill and his family and their families and their children were there for him. In uh, closing, a poem I read years ago came to mind. I would say, allow me to imagine that my brother was a waterfall. As the waterfall comes down or cascades down into the bright, clear pool, down, uh, excuse me, into this pool, the pool, in my vision, or not my vision, but my imagination, perhaps. I can see that pool spilling over. And it spilled over all. I asked myself, what filled Billy up? I observed that it was your love for him. It was your success, it was your failures. I know that he, it did his heart good to have, to see his grandchildren and to be so close to them. And I know he appreciated your perception of what life is. Very simply, life is a gift. Life is all about giving and receiving. And in passing, Billy's spirit lives on and on through you.
through us collectively. I believe our God will greet Billy and he will say, a job well done, my son. And I say this in the name of my Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. for notes but this is about 25 minutes long and I had to uh, find a way to shorten it. Good afternoon and thank you all for being here and Bobby thank you. Thank you very much uh, Reverend. My name is Frank. Bill and I met when his team came to St. John's University to audit a capital project that I was managing. That was 27 years ago, and we've been friends since. I should really say our families have been friends since. Now, I know that many of you have known him longer, but all I could say is Bill and I became close friends very quickly, and it has felt like a lifetime. Today, we might say it feels like it was too short or not enough except that Bill left a legacy of love and caring in a, so in a sweet ensemble of family and friends that keep him in our hearts. Bill was a big, strong, active man. In fact, Rosemary would say he was incapable of doing nothing. <laughs> Yet, a gentle, loving, and caring person is who we remember and who we feel when we think of Bill. Uh, Bill was genuinely attentive to the people around him, starting, of course, with Rosemary, Billy, Caroline, Victoria, their families, his brother and his sister, despite whatever. But then his umbrella opened wider to friends and colleagues. My family and I have felt that love. And I have memories of Bill's angst each, each year when the Deloitte partners would have to send to some of their hopeful young colleagues off to other opportunities. It was not something Bill enjoyed, but he had a way of doing it with sincere compassion and support. Now, one thing that Bill and I had in common is love of the beach, and we have passed that on to our children and grandchildren. There was a period of time in my life when I knew that over the summer months, I could go to a particular sandy parking lot, K, it was clear, and I could find Bill and family and other friends, and it wouldn't end there. It would be extended back at home at the house with more socializing, conversation, laughter, drinks, barbecue, and the secret ingredient was love. All of which Bill enjoyed thoroughly. I, I can see him smiling and attending to everyone with his quiet grace. Another passion which Bill and I shared was BMWs. Now, Bill was frugal, very frugal. However, he had a great respect for these engineering wonders. And even one day, when he and I were sharing a ride home from St. John's University, we stopped at Bayside BMWs and left with shiny convertibles. <laughs> Something our spouses, I don't think, appreciated very much. <laughs> Bill had really phenomenal insights into people. He really paid attention to people. So one time when he was helping me prepare a board presentation 
Um, he, he, you know, he produced the PowerPoint, which some of you may know he thought in PowerPoint, PowerPoint. Everything was PowerPoint. And I said, Billy, you have three different conclusions. And he pointed out that after all the hours we spent speaking with the university president, we had no idea how he wanted to present this. But what he told me was he was very confident in my ability to dance my way through this presentation and all would be good. And I trusted Bill, and I did, and it went well, and we got the green light. That was Bill. Bill was loving and kind, never judgmental, and fun to be with. And he would want us to remember his smiling, laughing, and having a good time at a big, inclusive party. Bill was a true friend, one who could listen to your whining, laugh at your jokes, and always make you feel better. I will always miss my dear friend. I'm sorry, I'm just so disorganized. And when you were Bill's friend, you had the dill guards as your friends, and you could never have better friends than that. I hope I'm not taking someone else's stuff. It's okay. I'm standing here before you, trying to hold back tears. This still feels so surreal. Maybe I just don't want to accept it. I just want to imagine him sneaking in the back, late as usual, wearing his collared shirt, tie, khakis, blue blazer, his crisp white hair, and quietly standing tall and strong. <clears throat> As I look around, I see my father was a brother, a husband of 51 years, to the love of his life, my mom, a father to three, a pop-up to six, an uncle to many, a best friend, a colleague, a mentor, a neighbor, and a good friend to us all. We're here because my dad had a way of making a lasting imprint on all of us. I ran into someone the other day, and he just said to me, a person like your father is hard to find. To each, of, to each of us, this may mean something a bit different. The stories we could share tells us just how special he was. As my mom would say, when they made my father, they threw away the mold, and you can take that any way you want. <laughs> <laughs> he was the guy that no one had anything bad to say about. He was brilliant, motivated, responsible, hardworking man that had a kind heart, a love for his family, especially his grandkids, a love for his tools, building just about anything, maintaining his pristine lawn, playing in the dirt, his bikes, his infamous bike shorts and pink helmet, <laughs> and a passion to work hard, to travel the world, to take his boat down the boat highway in Longbow Key and to relax at Cut K on a sunny day in Hampton Bays. My father's favorite line was, objects at rest tend to stay at rest and objects in motion stay in motion. And we all know that he lived his life in motion. He never could just sit down. There are so many stories, but a few of my favorites were of him as a young kid delivering newspapers in his neighborhood with his little brother, Uncle Bobby. He drove the Canada Dry, the Canada Dry tr delivery truck as a young adult, 
He and his friends would borrow the neighbor's car to go out at night. It was simple then, he would say. You just had to bring the car back with a full tank of gas. My dad wanted to go to Woodstock, but my mom didn't want to camp. So my dad went out and bought her a hatchback, and good thing he did. It poured the entire weekend. He would tie Billy to the cooler when he was a little rascal on the beach. When Billy got away, he said it was time to restock or go home. He put his doctor's cap on and delivered me at home when my mom went into labor with no time to spare. He was a cutting edge type of guy. He brought home one of the first laptops and taught Billy how to code at a very young age. He and my mom traveled up and down the East Coast to watch Caroline row and cheer her on while she was at Georgetown. He rode his bike in the five borough bike tour for 25 years with his famous hot pink helmet. He would just get off the train, arrive home, and have to jump into action to rescue us when we would get stuck out on the sound in our sailboats or motorboat. He would fly through Arizona on his way to California to check on me. He was always there when you needed him most. I've lost my father, my dad, my best friend. He is the person I called every day to say hi the one I'd ask all of my random questions to, and the one that had all of the answers. The one that was full of odd fun facts, the one that could figure out just about anything, the one that forgave me when I messed up, and the one that picked me up when I needed a hand, and the one that helped and never expected anything in return. You may not recall what he said or what he did, but you remember feeling safe you remember feeling comfortable, and you remember having a good time with him around. I will miss him forever and continue to wish that I'm going to wake up from this bad dream and that he will just appear around the corner to pick Henry up to go for a ride on his tractor, to take Charlotte for a spin on the handcart, to bring Bella for a ride in his convertible, to oversee Philip mow the lawn perfectly, to mix chocolate milk for Lucy, or just to tote Emily around in his arms. We miss his presence, his strength, his humor, his knowledge, his mighty hugs, and his unconditional love for his family and friends. We will look to all of our beautiful memories, our amazing photos and videos to keep his legacy alive. I promise to always remind Henry and Emily of his wisdom, his life lessons, his love, the joy they had together, and the bond that they shared even for this short time. I know they will continue to play in the dirt and make my dad very, very proud. My mom, Billy, Caroline, and I will watch our children grow and continue to instill the values and ethics that he instilled in us and that he lived by. I know he is here today, and I know that he will continue to watch over us, protect us, and guide us. Dad, you are forever my hero, and we all love you. One of the great uh, joys I have is being uh, an Episcopal priest in a, a, a special place like this at St. John's of Laddingtown, frankly. I mean, this, this beautiful space that you're worshiping in, but just beautiful people and, and stories like you, you just, just heard. It means an awful lot to me as, as, as a pastor, fellow struggler, person of faith along the way. And what we do as pastors really is to, to try to help you and each of us, I guess, uh, to live fully into um, to life, right? Uh, life and, and ministry and, and as congregational experience goes, that means from baptisms to, uh, to confirmations to weddings, uh, a 
maybe an ordination, who knows, um, until today like today. Our lives and God's church are, are one, in other words. And I can truly say it has been um, a great joy for me to be with uh, Caroline and, and Seymour and your children, Victoria and Joe and, and, and your crew. I know what it's like to, to be parents with children that are like, uh, you know, if you'll just sit just for a minute, you know, or here's a little, here's this or that, but that's, that's the part of it, isn't it? And, and Bill loves, of course, to, you know, and for Billy and Carla to Lucy, each of you today, we're all in this one big family with them. And Rosemary, you and Bill did one heck of a good job of raising up uh, these, these children. And you see now for the generation that follows. I think everybody in this room definitely would second that motion. St. John's is a, a family church, I like to say. We've been here a long time, well over 100 years in this little corner of Christendom. Uh, we've seen a lot of things. Uh, we're known for uh, a lot of things, hopefully uh, for the good, I believe. Uh, excellence in music and, and worship. Today, particularly with, with Charlotte and Chris, I mean, you saw firsthand, Charlotte, what a wonderful job you did. Excellence. Beautiful grounds, of course, around and the sustained commitment to... Um, to bringing healing and uh, renewal to, uh, to Glen Cove and to, to Locust Valley and for all communities around us. Absolutely, all in, St. John's will continue to be. Probably the most uh, recognizable event uh, that we host each year, I'm sure you probably, if you live in this general area, will know um, the St. John's Country Fair. Now, the St. John's Country Fair is quite an event. If you're watching from another place around the country, when you come to Locust Valley, you've you got to attend. It's the, typically the last weekend in September. And one of my lasting uh, memories of Bill, frankly, will be uh, watching him uh, just jump right in and uh, become a, the, the team or the volunteer for that event just a couple of years ago, the one I'm, I'm thinking about. It was a hot Saturday afternoon. Don't complain about cool weather in May, as you know the hot weather is coming. And in September, this particular day, it was really hot. And so it was around four o'clock in the afternoon and the volunteers and, and patrons all uh, bolted for the air conditioning. And the truth is, I was headed back uh, to the church, uh, too, until I turned around just outside on the, the step, looking over the sort of the great lawn. There is um, a great view of now the great lawn. And as Victoria just said, that there was that big mane of white hair, you know, right out. You couldn't, you, you couldn't miss him. Right out of the middle, Bill Delgard, stacking chairs. Of all things, I'm looking out there, and there's Bill, there's stacking chairs after every, and uh, hot dog wrappers flying around, and he, you know, he's trying to pick stuff up, and Philip and Charlotte and Bella, you know, around somewhere. Unbelievable. I said, what is this man doing out there? So I felt guilty. I turned back around and walked back out. I said, Bill, please, take a break. Cool down. Without missing a beat, I kid you not. He says, and here I've got this Alabama accent, I wish I could do the Queen's accent here. <laughs> no way, are you kidding me? That's the, the last thing I want to do. God has blessed me throughout my whole life, Bill says. And this point, he, he turns over to Rosemary, where all of you all are sort of scattered, gathered around, and he said, just look, look at my family. It's my turn to give back because my heart is full. I'll never forget that. Because my heart is full. Now, 
Bill's longtime friend from Queens, Bill Rafferty, the CBS uh, basketball commentator um, and a former great um, Seton Hall uh, basketball coach. Uh, Rafferty's known for uh, a lot of great uh, lines in college basketball. I, I, I love him. I don't know if Bill's here today or maybe if he's watching. Bill, I, I'm going to steal a couple of years. Everybody knows. But uh, when you're talking about Bill Dilgard, the big fella with an awfully big ticker. That's one of the, the highest compliments that Raf uh, can bestow on, on any player because it means that you have great character and, and a big heart and you play hard and you finish strong. In spite of the, the challenges, health, otherwise, I would say that is exactly Bill Dilgard, right? Big heart, play hard, finish strong. Man, Bill, you, you nailed that one, buddy. You finished strong, and you left behind a wonderful legacy of love right here in this room. Well done. So as Bill finished strong, let I think each one of us, and by that I mean Jews and Christians, one in the spirit, the God of Abraham, should be reminded that every human being is born into this world from a common source. And that source is the God of Abraham, who is absolute pure goodness. And when we die, that's exactly the source to which we return, right? That, that is exactly where we we return to that source of goodness because God is the source of all of life, life that has ever been and ever shall be is from God. God is the one who creates, who sustains us through the travels of life and thank goodness forgives us and has set us free to flourish in this life and the life to come. Our faith then, depending on wherever you are on the spiritual spectrum, so to speak, or in your faith walk, is you don't have to be afraid of death at all. Christians believe that Easter story means that each one of us then are set free. We are resurrected, if you will, with this Christ Jesus. And at the very core of that Easter belief is a central message. And it's not complicated. It's not locked in church doctrine or stained glass. It's a pretty simple message. And that is that life gets better. Life gets better because God is always our hope. Bill Dilgard, today we lift you to God, don't we? we? As hard as that is to say, Victoria, and to say goodbye, Billy and Caroline, we lift you to God. We lift you to a new living space, a space where he is safe and completely healed. And the Bible says that place is called the new Jerusalem, and oh, what a glorious, glorious place that must be for him, and one day for us too. You got it, Henry. You got it. I'm listening to you. There you go. Did you all hear that? Henry, say one more time. The church that say amen. Amen. Pop, pop, went to heaven, Henry. You're exactly right, buddy. Amen. <laughs> if 
congregation is invited to stand as you are able. And join with me in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue with the prayers found on page 480 in the Red Book of Common Prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Almighty God, who has knit together thine elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of thy Son, Christ our Lord, grant, we beseech thee, to thy whole church in paradise and on earth, thy light and thy peace. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and that through the grave and gate of death we may pass with him to our joyful resurrection. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that thy Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Grant to thy faithful people pardon and peace that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve thee with a quiet mind. Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in thy fatherly care, that casting all their grief on thee, they may know the consolation of thy love. Grant us with all who have died in the hope of the resurrection to have our consummation and bliss in thy eternal and everlasting glory and with blessed Bill and all thy saints to receive the crown of life which thou dost promise to all who share in the victory of thy Son, Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us remain standing.
Please be seated. Thank you all for coming. My mom and all of us have re received so much support and love from everyone. And one of my dad's very dear old friends sent my mom a poem last week, and she found a lot of comfort in it. She asked me to read it here today. It was Eddie, right? Eddie Clover sent this. It's called When Tomorrow Starts Without Me. And you. And for some of us, we may believe that he is still here with us. So tomorrow we'll start with him, but in a different form. When tomorrow starts without me, and I'm not here to see, if the sun should rise and find your eyes are filled with tears for me, I wish so much you wouldn't cry the way you did today while thinking of the many things we didn't get to say. I know how much you loved me, as much as I love you. And each time you think of me, I know you'll miss me too. But when tomorrow starts without me, please try to understand that an angel came and called my name and took me by the hand and said my place was ready in heaven far above and that I'd have to leave behind all those I dearly loved. But when I walked through heaven's gate, I felt so much at home. When God looked down and smiled at me from his great golden throne, he said, this is eternity and all I promised you. Today, your life on earth is past, but here it starts anew. I promise no tomorrow for today will always last. And since each day's the same way, there's no longing for the past. So when tomorrow starts without me, don't think we're far apart. For every time you think of me, I'm right here in your heart. Continue with the commendation found on page 482 of the Book of Common Prayer. And once again, we invite the congregation to stand as you are able. Give rest, O Christ, to thy servant with thy saints where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life everlasting. Thou only art immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and unto earth shall we return. For so thou didst ordain when thou createdst me, saying, Dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. All we go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to thy servant with thy saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life everlasting. And to thy hands, O merciful Savior, we commend thy servant Bill. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech thee, a sheep of thine own fold, a lamb of thine own flock, a sinner of thine own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of thy mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and to the glorious company of the saints and light. Before our blessing and dismissal, just a word 
in just a moment, we're going to continue our liturgy uh, out in the Memorial Garden. If you'll let us uh, process through and the family will follow. And then I think the ushers will help you on each side so we don't all sort of crash in together. But just take your time in, in just a moment and we'll uh, gather at the Memorial Garden. And now the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Is through that door is the restroom. Like, there's one in the office. If you kind of come in, and there's going to be a door to the right of the stairs. There's a small bathroom in that office. You're welcome to use that. I'm gonna go <laughs> You're going to go in. Door. You're going to go to the left. Yeah. There's a door to the right of the stairs. Yes. And you're going to go in that office, and there's a bathroom in that office. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Oh, no, go right ahead.